questions 89 to 91. Okay, so we start with a ball of mass 0.15 kilograms. So we'll just try to keep that mass in uh, mind because it's clear we're going to be doing some calculations and uh, try a straight horizontal path with a speed of uh, 30. So we have mass, we have speed. It means that we have um, um, uh, momentum. Okay, so that's momentum is, is mass times uh, velocity. Uh, it's better to say it that way. And then it was a perfectly elastic collision. Okay, no net external forces. And then uh, you have the equation for the impulse. Usually uh, it's written with the letter I for impulse, but you can also write it delta P, but you can also write it um, delta MV because the impulse is the instantaneous change in momentum. Um, and of course, uh, this is equal to uh, force times uh, delta T. So that's the information that they have provided you with. So after rebounding uh, from the body, what is the magnitude of the momentum of the ball? So, um, yes, so there's the momentum of the ball. So we know that uh, the change in P is equal to the uh, change in momentum. Okay, it's the instant, well, change in P is the change in momentum. So, um, and, and this is really, it, it is the impulse. So. Another way of writing it is to say that the change in P is going to be the, um, uh, I'll let P stand, uh, continue to stand for momentum, and uh, it will be the final momentum minus the initial momentum. And so we can f calculate the impulse from the graph, and we can calculate the initial momentum from this the initial momentum will just be 30 times 0.15 and uh, I should have put kilograms here that's kilograms so 30 times 0.15 will be the initial and you can just see that that's equal to 4.5 so the initial momentum here is going to equal to 4.5 um, which is just, the, just that times that and now by calculating this the impulse we'll have that now you may wonder why did i say uh, or did i <laughs> why did i say that it's the um it's the uh, area under the curve and it's because uh, we just we just look at the graph and the graph has time versus force in newtons time versus force so if you multiply look it, it, if this is a square and you have x and you have y and i ask you what's the area of the square you'd say x times y so that's how it works. That's how graphs work. You know, you look at the x-axis, you look at the y-axis. If you're curious, what would the area under the curve give me? Well, just multiply the units in one from, uh, to the units of the other, or multiply one for the other. And we've been told that force times um, the time is equal to the impulse. So then, uh, so then we know we can get the area under the curve that way. So there's a, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The traditional way is just to um, calculate its triangle. So let's just calculate the area under the curve by saying one half um, base times height. Because this is how you calculate area like that. But if you have a triangle, you do one half base times, um, times the height. So th this would be the traditional way to do it. And so I would, um, I would say one half and uh, for the uh, for the base, you see that it goes from zero. I'd say from zero point one four um, on the x-axis seconds to point uh, oh six. Okay, and then the height goes up to three hundred. Okay, so we have uh, this this component, which is um, it's going to be point oh eight. Okay, so this is point oh eight. I'm going to let a couple of these zeros come in and turn my 0.08 to the number 8. Then I'll have 8 times 3, that's 24, uh, over 2, so that's 12. Okay, if that's too fast, uh, don't worry, you know, uh, you practice and, and you'll get faster at it. But just put it up, put the video on pause and uh, try it out, and then with time uh, you'll, you'll just get faster. Okay, so remember that this uh, number 12, this change in momentum, it's going to be going against the original momentum. So if this ball comes like this 
and hits something, then it's going to move into the opposite direction. So it's going to move in the, in the opposite direction. So if I give a positive number to the original um, momentum, then this is going to have a, to have a negative number because it's going in the opposite direction. Now, to calculate the final momentum, I'll add 4.5 to both sides. And so I'll have minus 7.5 because it's going in the opposite direction. And then this would be the final uh, momentum. So I look and uh, that's one of the answer choices. Now, I said that there's another way you could have uh, answered this. Um, and that is instead of doing the area under the curve this way, you could have looked at the uh, graph Okay, and you can have just looked at what one box represents and you will see that you have 0.05 here <clears throat> and you have 100 over here. So that means that one box is equal to, you know, this times that. So 0.05 times that. So that will equal to five. So you have five units is one box. And then if you look at the triangle and you try to uh, take that triangle <clears throat> and to uh, pretend that you're adding it to the three boxes on one side, for example. Just look at any three boxes and see if you can imagine taking this part of the triangle, half of the triangle, and transposing it into these parts of these, this, these three boxes. You would see that you would uh, not quite fill those three boxes. So whatever number that, um, that uh, the momentum force times delta t would be, it would be a number that would be less than three boxes, which means less than 15. So it, we ended up calculating 12. But if you just knew that it was less than 15, you would get the correct answer choice A, because the other numbers are just too far apart. So um, this is just another way you can calculate the area under the curve is by um, counting boxes. Sometimes when you have, you know, projectile motion problems or somebody running and you have curves and you have to calculate the area under it, sometimes it's easier with the numbers, but sometimes it's easier by counting boxes. Here it was easier for us to do this calculation, but I just want you to know that there's an alternative uh, way to do it. So question 90. As a consequence of the elastic collision, elastic, uh, the kinetic energy of the ball does not change. You know, Acer put that right there as A to catch people who have been just memorizing that um, in an elastic collision, you get conservation of uh, momentum, of course, and you also get conservation of kinetic energy. In uh, inelastic collision, you do not get conservation of kinetic energy, but for elastic collisions, like in this case, you you do get conservation of kinetic energy, but that's conservation of kinetic energy for the system, not just the ball alone. And in fact, you don't even have to calculate anything for this question because we know for sure that the kinetic energy of the ball increases because we saw that the original momentum was 4.5, but we calculated that the final momentum, the absolute value, the magnitude of the final momentum is 7.5. So if we had to calculate, knowing that the mass doesn't change, okay, the mass is the same, and knowing that momentum is mass times velocity, clearly the final velocity is higher. And we know that kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. And so if the final velocity is higher, that means uh, the kinetic energy is higher. And of course, for those of you who wanted to go through the calculation, um, it, you know, just for fun, if you had to do, <laughs> just for fun, anyway, if you had to do one half mv squared, you would do one half, of course, it's, uh, it's uh, 0 0.15 uh, v squared. Um, and the velocity squared is going to be 30. So uh, we'd have 30 squared, and uh, that's one half over here. And so um, this would be equal to, okay, so we have uh, 90 squared is going to be, sorry, 90 squared, uh, um, 30 squared is 900, uh, and that's 0.15, and that's over two. 
And then we have, um, okay, so I'm going to let two of those zeros sink in and turn that 0.15 to 15. So we have 15 times 9. And so uh, 15 times 9 is going to be 135. Okay, so 135 over 2 would be our um, original uh, kinetic energy. Now for the final kinetic energy, um, I'll do the calculation over here. We have one half, the mass is the same, uh, 0 0.15, and then uh, the velocity, the velocity would be, um, uh, would be the momentum, seven, which is uh, 7.5. Uh, that was the uh, momentum that we calculated, and uh, that's going to be divided by the mass, 0.15, that gives the velocity, and we have to uh, square this. So 7.5 uh, over 1.15, uh, so that is going to be 50. We have to square that. So um, squaring uh, 50, we've got 25 and 0, 0. In fact, I'm not going to write these 0, 0. I'm just going to add this to the uh, 15 and put 15 over here. And all this is going to be uh, multiplied by 1 half. So I have uh, 15 times uh, 25. I know uh, 25 times 10 is 250. So uh, 15 times 25, so that's going to be 375. So this is going to be equal to 375 uh, over 2. So, and, um, so the, the difference between these two is, uh, you can just see it, it's 240 over 2. So um, I'll just write that here, 240 uh, over 2, and that's equal to 120. So that's a really long uh, calculation. Uh, you could have skipped all of that by just noticing um, that there was a momentum change and what the momentum change was. And question 91. I consider the combined momentum and, and combined kinetic energy of the ball and the body during the collision. Completely different situation. Uh, which of the following is true for the collision? Because it's a perfectly elastic collision, we get conservation of momentum and we get conservation of kinetic energy for the system. Not for individual parts, but for the system. And if you uh, wanted to do uh, any more reviewing of this topic, uh, you can... Uh, uh, look it up in Physics 4.3 and 4.4, uh, which is, uh, and, uh, and also there's the work energy chapter, which is chapter 5, which is also uh, quite uh, pertinent.